What up everybody, Son of Terra 92 here with another quick Malaysia side story on the Technology Geeks channel, but this time I'm not playing any video games. I just wanted to make a video to talk about the current state of things here in Malaysia. You know, you guys should really appreciate watching these videos because one of these days I will no longer be in Malaysia to make Malaysia side stories, but never mind that. Onwards with the vlog! Malaysia has seen quite a rocky start to its Visit Malaysia 2014 year as far as its national image and prestige that it presents to the world is concerned. Earlier this year we had the disastrous Bible raid by religious authorities, then there was the five-year Anwar sentence, and then after that there was the management of the MH370 incident. And now as we continue into more mid-March madness we have the cancellation of future music festival FMFA y'all. This is a story that's much more relevant to me because unlike the commentaries that I did on the Bible Raid and MH370, I was actually there as it happened. Okay, so here's the skinny. I've been working for Telecom Malaysia, commonly known over here as TM, a high-speed broadband internet service provider for about three weeks now as my undergraduate industrial training program. It's your typical 9 to 5 job that involves staring at a monitor for hours on end. This is where the magic happens. I could literally feel the youth in me getting sucked out of my face as I was doing it. So it's understandable that I wanted to get away from it all for a while. I wanted to get out of the world of the ordinary and clear my mind for just a little bit. Just a little bit. My decision to go to future was admittedly a last minute one. We didn't really plan it. I mean, I was hearing about it on the radio for a long time, but it was on the back burner with a bunch of friends, and we weren't really sure whether we were going to pull the trigger or not. Eventually, we decided to throw caution to the wind and decided to go, because YOLO, right? Just a harmless adventure to loosen up and get away from things. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> right? Right? Nothing can go wrong, right? <laughs> okay. Despite what I said on my Awakening 2013 video, I'm actually kind of a shy, socially awkward person, IRL. It's been getting better recently as I've been trying to push myself to break out of my typically sheltered existence. But usually I would only go crazy, wild, stupid with just my close friends and interacting within large groups of people was kind of out of my norm. This would be my first music festival ever and I was really looking forward to just losing my shit. Just losing all my shit and raving to Macklemore, Pharrell Williams and a host of other artists who honestly I have no idea who they are but regardless. Speaking of Macklemore, I would have probably not even gone had Macklemore and Ryan Lewis not been a part of the lineup because I remember the first time I heard White Walls it was like it's like what's that sound? What's that sound? Did my ears deceive me and I was like World peace right there. That's world peace. That's the sound of the, that's the sound of the solution to every problem in the entire world. So I was there for that one song. That one song would have made the whole experience worth it. So there I was, ticket in hand, party shirt on, cool shades ready, and slightly intoxicated, waiting for them to get the gates open when suddenly <laughs> What? Sorry, could, could you repeat that? Yeah, again, I think I might have gone deaf in one ear. No, 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 yeah, I get that part, but... It's cancelled. What's cancelled? Oh, the show is cancelled. What? I try to get loose for one night, one Saturday night, and you do this to me? Now, now, calm down, young man. There's a perfectly good reason for this. It's for your own safety. But, but, but white walls. So it turns out that on the second day of the three-day festival, five Malaysians had died due to drug-related incidents, and the Malaysian popo, who were there in force, 
decided to shut down the third day of the festival for safety reasons. The cancellation resulted in a lot of sad faces on behalf of the hundreds of people that had gathered in front of Bukit Jalil Stadium for hours, a lot of lost tempers, and a lot of improper gestures, of which I was actually a part of. As well as a lot of unsung patriotism, you really had to be there to believe it. There were flags from all over the place, and people had come from all over the pale blue dot just for this event. Wait, sorry mate. We actually came all the way from Sydney. We saw, Sydney. We saw Future last Saturday in Sydney and had such a good time. We booked flights earlier this week to come all the way to KL for today. And now we're standing here in the festival being cancelled. We fucking live in Sydney. It's fucking ridiculous. Alright, alright. Very disappointing. Alright. I really, I really hope I get a refund. They better. I'm. I'm fucking ridiculous. I'm gonna go to them. We live in Sydney. Cool. It's gonna be on YouTube. Ridiculous. Oh, cool. Malaysia Bole, right? <laughs> Here's where I make my stand. They shouldn't have cancelled the concert on the grounds that we had already paid good money for it, and that it would have eventually caused long-term implications for the Malaysian government and the organizers. Cancelling it would have caused more trouble than good in the long run. Five drug fatalities was all it took for the Royal Malaysian Police to deploy its riot squads. People die at festivals all the time. And to make myself sound smart, here are a list of the three deadliest festivals in all of recorded human history. Number three! Mawazine Festival Morocco 2009, where 11 people died and 40 people were injured due to a stampede. Numero dos! Love Parade Germany, 21 people died due to suffocation. Number one! Great White West Warwick, Rhode Island, where 100 people died in a pyrotechnics disaster. You notice that not all those deaths were due to drug overdose. These kind of cases usually happen on the sidelines due to stupid people that really just don't know their limits. And let's face it, we all know at this point that the risk and danger involved is part of the attraction of going to large gatherings of human beings. Have you no decency? Five families are grieving because of this. Yes, but what if I told you that there is a religious gathering or festival of sorts that has claimed way more lives and would make FMFA look like a children's party attended by senior citizens? How's that for a festival, son? And it's actually socially acceptable to die at this one. Huh, what? Take FMFA and compare it to the largest religious gatherings of all times, like the, the Muslim Hajj, for example, which in the year 1970, I believe, 1990 alone, took 1,426 lives, and in 2006 claimed the lives of 346 people. And the weird thing is, is that Muslims actually want to die at the Hajj. Even at its worst, music festivals and concerts never did anyone any more harm than the Muslim Hajj has been doing for the recent number of years that people have been going to Hajj. And people have been going to Hajj for a very long time. And proofs in the statistics. You guys can look this stuff up online, it's all there. If I can know it, so can you. You have to admit that it is a gross double standard when one event is considered to be nothing but pointless hedonism when the other event is seen as a positive and flowery gateway to more pointless hedonism. If you're a guy, that is. If you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm not against anyone going for Hajj. I mean, have at it, Haas. And when you think about it, both events are forms of escape from the real world. I'm cool with it as long as you don't go to intentionally hurt people. But do I pity the people who died? at Armin Van Buren's set last Friday? Yes, I do. Do I think they were stupid? That they OD'd on drugs? Yes, I do. But authorities shouldn't cancel the whole thing simply because a bunch of stupid people did something stupid. I mean, we're not all stupid, are we? So what do we take from this, actually? I mean, I usually try to leave some positive message in my videos that we can try to improve humanity with. What I learned is that human beings just have to be smart with picking their poison and living with the consequences of those actions. Even now, the Malaysian authorities and the festival organizers are going to have to deal with their own consequences eventually, sometime in the future. That's all for me, Sunterra92, out!